I actually feel privileged that I grew up in the Okavango Delta, where it, it, it's, it, it's a beautiful place, if I may say. If you look behind me here, you see the, the magnificent water body that is flowing. Uh, today, I just want to take you a little bit more into the, the, the dynamics of the Okavango Delta. Yeah, come and enjoy this beautiful water body with us. We will explore and take you into all sacred corners uh, and enjoy the place that I like the most. It, it's quite amazing that if you look at this water, think about uh, how much rain in Angola uh, bringing this beautiful or magnificent water body. We're looking at uh, 11 million cubic meters of water. Uh, it's quite a huge volume flowing from about 1,800 into, into this direction down to the east and it travels about 1,400 uh, in, in kilometer distance spreading into the uh, Kalahari sand forming multiple channels benefiting all people from all corners uh, including the wildlife that you may find here. Think about it, Botswana has got the highest population of elephants benefiting from this water. Think about the hippopotamus, think about the crocodiles and, and, and all those antelopes including the red leech, not forgetting the Sita Tunga. You wouldn't believe if I tell you into this water there's so much fish life in here. A lot of birds, you might even hear some birds calling on the, on the, on the tree line. African data, the birds that would not survive if we don't have this beautiful water. The African fish eagle, which everybody might love in terms of its beautiful call. And a couple of kingfishers, I tell you, the trees that we just passed here, those happens to be their perching areas when they look down in the water for fish. This water, when it flows into Botswana, uh, up to like about 90 to 100 kilometer, then it hit a big fault line and it begins to spread. And then the central component happens to come down and this is the channel we are now sitting on. This channel here is called Boro. But once this Boro, we, we carry on furthermore until we get to the tourist town of Maon, it hit another fault line and then it's caving. It's not going straight as you see. It will be going down towards the southern part and this water will continue along the Tamalakani River as it's been called until it hit another fault line which diverted down towards the southeastern part into the uh, Buteti River. Along the Buteti River towards the Pants, massive numbers of zebras are migrating from up north from then they go up to Naipan. This zebra migration is the second biggest migration in Africa after the wildebeest in East Africa. We're looking at uh, numbers up to 12 to 18,000 zebras together in one big head. So not only the zebras, a couple of heads of elephants as well. So as the water spread furthermore down, it helps to open up gaps and, and spread out the animals, particularly the big game, the elephant, the buffaloes, they, they, they can also reach out to those areas and access different habitats. If we keep cruising for a couple of hours, nearly about eight hours down towards the tourist town of Maun, on the way we're going to see some settlements, some areas that people are coming to plow crops. A couple of fishermen are also benefiting from this water as it arrives. Uh, people who lived within and around this water body here would actually come in, in different ways. Some of them are even good at swimming, some will get into the water up to like their waist level and those people are harvesting what we call a water lily, they dig out the rhizo, which is uh, one among the staple food for the local people and uh, a couple of fishermen have, have, have their canoes, some of them like traditionally made dugout canoe from specific trees that we may find here as we explore, trees like the sausage tree, it's one among those uh, trees that they the Delta inhabitants, particularly the river bushmen, who have got adap uh, they adapted their lifestyle within within these aquatic uh, food sources they can find here. 
that fellow to be coral uh, when, when I was young is too deep for a boy of about 10 years old. My uncle had to, to take me into a mukoro, into the water like this. I fell about, I cannot tell how many, but <laughs> thanks, I survived. Those are the skills that you learn when you grow up here. The reason I like walking now is because I did it when I was young, a lot more. So I experienced a lot into how you find your your water, how you find your, your food, what is it that you can eat, what you can't eat. So those are the kind of life that the, the, the river bushmen have, uh, have enjoyed over the years of their lifetime being in the Delta.